Alrighty, boys and girls up. Welcome back. It's your main map, and Ms. Shank coming to you live some, from Summit Academy. And in this video, we're talking about our unit number five, still working with our functions, and we're working on lesson three. So for the first part, it says a squares area. It says fill in the table of input-output pairs for the given rule. And then you have the right and out drag expression for the rule in the box of the diagram. So it's saying, okay, if you're if you have a square with a side length that is S, it's saying, okay, well, what is going to be the area that is inside of this square? And well, that area is going to be A. If we have a side length S, since they're both, si uh, both sides are the same, we can say that's going to be the same as S squared. So let me write it like this. I'm going to say S squared, or S times S, is going to be the same as the area. So that means if we were to calculate it, we would say, okay, well, 8 squared is going to be 64. We're going to say 2.2 .2 squared is going to be 4.84. Then we said 12 and 1 fourth. That's the same as 12.25. So let me write that. That's 12.25, which means if we square that, we would have 150. 0.0625. So make sure you can change your fractions to decimals, that way they're easier to work with. But if we have our side length squared, or excuse me, our side length, we can say we can have S squared, or we can write just A for our area. Then part underneath is the middle of the page. It says to we're talking about diagrams, equations, and descriptions. So it says to record your answers to these equations in the table provided. So first part is to match these diagrams with these uh, sentences. So the first one, it says the circumference C of a circle with radius R. Well, I can find and say, okay, my diagram with that first one is going to be D. So I'm going to say that uh, if this is, so let me actually write, let me actually write this in here. So this is going to be description A, this is B, C, and uh, lowercase d. So you can uh, write lowercase, match it with the uppercase. So I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to say, okay, the diagram that goes with it is going to be D. Then for the next one, it says the distance in miles that you would travel T if you drive at 60 miles per hour. So the only one that works with that is going to be the capital B. So I'm going to write capital B on that one. You can make sure this is capital D. Make that a little bit better. Sure. Uh, for the next one, it says the output when you're triple, or when you triple the input and subtract four, so that's going to be that capital C, because I have 3x minus 4. And then for the last one, it says the volume of a cube V is uh, given its edge length is S. So that's going to be that diagram A. So you have to match those diagrams with these descriptions. And what you can do now is we have to write the equation that expresses that uh, output as a function of the input. So we're going to say, okay, if we look at our diagrams uh, for D, that means we're going to have C equals, and we have 2 times pi times the radius. So 2 times pi times the radius. For our diagram B, we can write our distance is equal to 60 times T. For our diagram C, that's like our normal slope intercept form. So we have y equals 3x and then minus 4. And then for that first diagram, we can write our equation. We can say v is going to be equal to an s. Let me try writing that again s to the third power. 
You have to write the equation for each of those. Now it says, okay, if your input is 5, what is your output going to be? So all you have to do is plug in 5 into each of these equations. So for that first one, I'm going to replace r with 5. So I say 2 times 5 is 10. So I can say I have 10 pi, which is going to be approximately 31.4. The next one I can plug it in. So let me, let me actually say for this first one, I said C equals 2 times pi times 5. We use parentheses. 2 times pi times 5. That's going to be the first one. For the next one, it has D equals 60 times 5, which is the same as 300. For that diagram C, just like we've been doing plug in 5 equals x, uh, for x, and so we could say y equals 3 times 5 minus 4. We have 3 times 5 is 15. 15 minus 4 is 11. And then we have to figure out what is our output when we have s equals 5. So we have our volume equals 5 to the third power. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 again is going to be 125. Then we just have to label our independent variable. So that, this one's real simple because we're saying it's where, where the x is. Now for dependent, it's going to be where <clears throat> the y is. So if you ever you know, have it set up differently, make sure you're saying you know the dependent variable is dependent on what you plug in for your independent variable. So for example, I can say, okay, my independent variable for this first one is going to be R, where my dependent variable is going to be C. My independent variable is going to be T, and my dependent variable is going to be D. Then I have my X and my Y, and then I have S and B. So you gotta make sure you take your time on those, make sure you can label those independent variables and those dependent variables separately. All right, for the next part, it's talking about dimes and quarters. It says Jada has some dimes and quarters that have a total value of $12.50. The relationship between them. The number of dimes, D, and the number of quarters, Q, can be expressed by the equation 0 0.1 times D plus 0 0.25 times Q. And we're going to set that equal to that 12.5 because that's $12.50. So we're, that makes sense because we're saying, you know, each dime is 10 cents and each quarter is 25 cents. And that add those uh, together to get twelve dollars sense. So now we have to kind of figure out how this is going to work. What we can do is we can we can rewrite we can rewrite with x and y. And so in order to do that, we can say if our dimes are x and our quarters are y, we can rewrite the equation to be 0.1 x plus 0.25y equals 12.5. That way it's a little bit easier to graph because when we set it up like this, we can say, hey, what is going to be our what is going to be our equation when they have four quarters? So that we're saying this, we're saying if I rewrite it, I can say I have 0 0.1 times d. So it's still times D equals 0 0.25 times 4. Sorry, this is 0 0.1 D plus 0.25 times 4. That should be equal to 12.5. Another way you can do it, you can graph it out. So let's actually do that. Let's say graph. And what I'm going to say is, I'm going to, I'm going to say this first one, I'm going to say x equals, or sorry, no, x. We're going to say y equals 4, actually. We say y equals 4. All right, so let me pull up my graph real quick. So in our first equation, 
we have the original, so we're going to say we have 0.1x, where x is the number of dimes, and we have 0.25 times y, which is uh, quarters, we're saying 12.5. where it's at, it shows up somewhere, there we go, so I may have to zoom out a little bit, but that's okay, okay, so now we're saying, okay, we need to find and say how many dimes does she have when they have four quarters, so we say y equals four, find the intersection point, so it's saying when they have 115 dimes, they have four quarters. So let me hide this again. Actually, let me just write it in here. We'll say uh, when y is four, we're going to say uh, 115 dimes. So that first one is 115 dimes. All right. For the next one, it says if Jada has 10 quarters, how many dimes does she have? So similar situation, but we're going to write instead, we're going to say y equals 10. So we graph the same one. So let me actually change colors. Let me do orange. Let's say y equals 10. We're still graphing this original equation that we have right here. And then we graph the new one, which is y equals 10. Okay. Let me pull this back up. So we say y equals 10. Find where they are equal. And so it's saying when Jada has 10 quarters, that means that she can only have 100 dimes. So let me write that in. So that means we'll have, so it'll be similar to this. It'll be 0 0.1 times D plus 0 0.25 times 10 equals 12.5. That's the same as saying that I have 100 dimes. Okay. So then the third part, it says, it, is the number of dimes a function of the number of quarters? If yes, write the rule. And then are you able to determine it? Give them the output. So you can actually say yes for this one. And what I can do is I can write its own equation. So let me do in blue. So I'm going to say what the rule is going to be. I can say, so for this one, I can say yes. And the rule is going to be D equals 125 minus 2.5. Q. So I had to kind of rewrite my equation and I had to write it the output as D where the input would be Q. Alright, for part four or for number four it says if they have 25 dimes, how many quarters do they, do they have? So I can actually still use the same graph. However, now I'm going to say when X equals 25 what is going to be that intersection point. So let me pull up that graph, clear that next one out. So still using this same blue line, but I'm going to say now x equals 25. So find where they intersect. We're going to say when x equals 25, y is going to be equal to 40. So that means this. Let me hide it and bring it back. So this is going to say how many quarters does she, uh, does she have? Well, this is going to be 40, 40 quarters. All right. Same situation for number five, except we're going to say x equals 30. Plug it into your graph. If it will let me show it. There we go. So now I'll type in 30. Find the intersection point. So we're going to say we have 38 quarters for this one. So it's real simple as long as you're plugging in like so. So this one would be 38 quarters. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, it says, can we write it 
uh, q as a function. We certainly can. So I'm going to say q equals 50 minus 0 0.4 times d. And all we're doing is kind of reorganizing or rewriting that original equation that we started with that's given up here. We're just kind of rewriting it and solving it for q. All right. For back part for the practice, what you have to do is it says here's an equation. It says uh, that represents a function, so it has 72x plus 12y equals 60. And so what you have to do is you have to first, so let me say this, so let's say, so graph, graph this equation, and then it says to select all of the different equations that describe the same function. And remember, that means that it has the as it means it's an overlapping, overlapping lines. So what you can do is let's graph this original equation first. So let me clear these two out, hit that home button to get back. So my original equation is 72x plus, let's say 12y, there we go, equals 60. So we have our equation here, and what we can do is we can graph and see which ones line up. So for example, it has the first one, we can say 120y plus 720x equals 600. Notice how as I write that, that last uh, value in, I can say, hey, it overlaps. And so that first one is going to be good. So let me hide this again. Let me say for this one, this one is going to be the same. I can put a, let me put a star by it and circle it. And I'm going to say this line is going to be the same. Let me give you a different one. Let me actually do this one down here. So let's do a different line this time. So if I do that bottom right line, I'm going to say I have x equals 5 over 6 plus y over 6. And I graph it out, and I see, hey, they don't overlap, and they actually intersect. And so I'm going to write that intersection point because they don't overlap. So let me write that one down real quick. All right, so we're saying for this one, careful, for this one, we're going to say uh, it's not going to be the same. And so instead, we're going to we can just put like, a, put like an X by it and say, OK, this is going to be the solution point instead. So let me actually write the solution point. So I'm going to say 0 0.833 comma 0. So now what I want you to do is I want you to pause for your turn. So pause for your turn. And what you're going to do is you're going to graph, graph remaining, remaining equations to look for overlapping lines if they do not overlap then write the solution point similar to what we just did right here that bottom one again this one does not overlap so does not overlap because there is a point of intersection however if they do overlap that means the same it is the same line so pause try it out for yourself check with me all right so now that you got that in 
uh, for this second one, it says graph a system of linear equations with no solutions. So this one's a little bit different. So when it has no solutions, what that means is it has the same slope, but has different, different y intercept. And so what I'm going to do is I will give you one of the equations and you have to come up with the other. So let's say I'm going to, be, I'm going to give you, so I'm going to say given, I'm going to say, all right, if my equation is y equals negative 3 over 4, x plus 2. Again, go to graph it out. So I'm going to plot my points. Again, start with your y-intercept at on the y-axis, that's 2. And I can count down three steps and to the right to 4. So remember... Again, negative 3 over 4 means 3 down and 4 right. So I'm going to count from that space. I'm going to count 1, 2, 3 down and then 4 to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Plot my next point and then I can draw my line. So do that same kind of step. 3 down, 4 to the right. Again, be able to have those in there. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. Draw your line through those points, like so. Say about right here-ish. Oh, that's a little bit too large. Let's make it a little bit smaller. How about here? There we go. So draw a line through those points. Again, it should be a straight line because it is a linear function. So, and make sure you write which one it is. So I'm going to say y equals negative 3 over 4 x plus 2. So now, same kind of idea. Pause for your, your turn. And what you need to do is graph or come up with the equation that has the same slope but a different y-intercept. Remember, no solutions, so no points of intersection. That just means it is parallel lines, parallel lines. So pause, make sure you can graph it out, and check, check with B. All right, on number three it says brown rice costs two dollars per pound and beans cost $1.60 per pound. It says Lynn has $10 to spend on these items to make a large meal of beans and rice for a potluck dinner. Let B be equal to the number of pounds of beans. So we're going to say B is beans, and the price of beans is 160. And we're going to say that the rice is $2 per pound, and we're going to let R be that. So if you wanted to write an equation, you can write it like this, using those two variables. We're saying $2 for every pound of rice plus $1.60 for every pound of beans. Those added together will be equal to $10 because that's all that Lynn has to spend. So that's going to be our equation with those two variables. And then we can rearrange it so that way B is going to be our independent variable. So that means we have R equals, and we have 5 minus 0 0.8 times B. So be able to kind of rewrite it so that way you have R all by itself. And then similar idea, let's write it so we have B all by itself. We're going to say B is equal to 6.25 minus 1.25 R. So be able to kind of rearrange those equations for yourself. Okay. For the last part, so solve each equation in, by graphing and write the solution point. So just like we've been doing before, I'm going to do this one and then I'll pass it off to you. So I'm going to do this one right here. You do that in purple actually. Let's change it up. All right. So now let me pull up my graph. But the way it works is you graph. You graph one side. So this is 1, 
line, and then we're going to say that this is going to be the other side of the equation is going to be another line. So let me graph that first one, and then we can graph the second one. So let me unhide it and pull this up. So the first one is going to be 4x plus 5. So that's going to be my, actually, let me change that color around so it was purple. Uh, we can do, do green, close enough. Or maybe white. Okay. So that's our first, our left side is going to be that. And then our right side is going to be negative 3x minus 8. And we're going to say that's going to be our orange line. So you, then all you have to do is find that solution point. So wherever they intersect is where they are equal. So we're going to say our ordered pair for this one is going to be negative 1.857. And then the other one's going to be negative 2. So let me write that down. So we're going to say this one, our solution point is negative 1.857. Eight five seven, comma, and negative two point four two nine. So again, all you have to do is graph out one side, hit enter, graph out the other side, and find that solution point x and y. So make sure that you're graphing out. So I can pause for your turn and. Check answers with me. All right. Make sure you can try graphing those out to find the solution points. Be sure to ask questions. And as always, super slam that subscribe button.